Good evening, my name is Krista Hazenkope, and I'm really excited to talk to you tonight about the power of open data in community. But first, what is open data? So open data you can think of like a book uh, in a, on a bookshelf in a library instead of a pile of books on the floor. It's information that is predictable, organized, and findable, just like that book on the bookshelf. So you can use it and reuse it. But full disclosure, I didn't always realize how awesome open data was. And in fact, I didn't actually know what open data was for quite some time. Um, I'm an atmospheric scientist, and uh, my open data journey started in uh, the other side of the world, in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. So Ulaanbaatar is the capital city of Mongolia, and if you're not familiar, it's between the Gobi Desert and uh, uh, the Siberia. Uh, and I have to tell you, it is really, really cold. Uh, the temperature is negative 40 Fahrenheit or Celsius, they overlap at that point, and uh, you get icicles on your eyelashes when you're walking around. So this is what the downtown area looks like. That's not poor photo quality in the wintertime, that's, that's air filled with smoke, and you can taste that air. Um, and so I was there for two years with my husband, Joe. I was doing air pollution research, and he's a software developer. And relatively nearby, south of us, in another highly polluted place, Beijing, China, uh, there was a really cool project going on that we noticed. Uh, the U.S. Embassy there had placed a monitor, air quality monitor, on the roof, and it was sharing data via Twitter. It was tweeting out data. And, and these tweets and that data actually changed the conversation about air pollution in China. This, the, the data from the tweets started showing up in people's apps, on their phones, and in media articles, and the government uh, started putting more monitors across the city, um, and um, uh, uh, the policies actually got a lot stricter, and while well, Beijing still has an air pollution problem, it, it, it has improved significantly. So we noticed this back in Ulaanbaatar, and we thought, why don't we try putting up a monitor? So we did. Uh, we, with colleagues, we set one up at a university, and we were really surprised at the impact that this little project had. Uh, it caught a lot of media attention. My Mongolian colleague was called into parliament to talk about the role of open data in science in fighting air pollution. So we started wondering once we got back from Mongolia, well, what, what, what does data look like across the world for air quality? And as it turns out, there's quite a bit. There's a ton, but it's really hard to get to. It's not truly open. So we wondered what would happen if we started opening it up. So one day in our living room, we stopped wondering about uh, how to open it up and actually just started doing it. Um, so we started an open source project called OpenAQ. And so this project gives air quality out to anyone who wants it, that, that data, and it also lets people help us build this project in an open way. And so uh, now, OpenAQ is a nonprofit, and it's uh, served out more than 160 million air quality data points uh, across the world. But the really cool thing is not the data itself, but what people and communities are doing with it. So people use this information to write scientific articles showing wildfire maps uh, and, and uh, apps and um, media articles and other open source projects. Um, and I would say even more than the data uses themselves, it's really the community that's come around the data. So people are first interested in our platform because of the, the open data, but once you get scientists and policymakers and medical doctors uh, and uh, app developers in the same room, that's really where you start seeing the magic happen. Uh, so for instance, when we were, we did a workshop in uh, Sarajevo, Bosnia, and that group there, this very diverse group, decided that they just, they wanted to figure out how much pollution was coming from which places in their city. Uh, a pretty policy relevant question. And so they basically came together and uh, created a, a study, and it's going on right now as we speak in, in Sarajevo to fi fix that problem. And so I've, I've found from Sarajevo, from Beijing to, to, to Ulaanbaatar, that it's <laughs> not so much about the uh, it's not so much about the, 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 the power of open data is very uh, uh, powerful, but what really gets a community going and, and what they can come together around is when they connect with each other so they can take that data and run. And I think some of the world's most pressing problems don't require rocket science to fix them, but what they do require is sustained local political will and a good solid plan. And the two things that I know that generate those the best are open data and a community that is passionate about change. Thank you.